and we're on. Okay. <laughs> Sorry for all the laughing that might occur during this video. This is number three, right, of uh, unlearning yourself. And um, today we're going to talk more about the story itself that has been placed on your life to create your ego, uh, the you that you call yourself. And we were laughing because it's been an insane afternoon. Edri and I are ending the year um, in giggle fits. And she, I, we, I found this magazine that I want to use as a prop, and it's Life magazine. And she had just said, you're holding life in your hands. <laughs> and I said, well, yeah. <laughs> anyway, um, she's going to show you this cover. and We're going to talk about this. This is from November 21st, 1955, and this is the real deal. And this woman right here is Jane Mansfield, and you can look her up. And these three, these four, I can count. <laughs> Sorry, the whole day's been like this. <clears throat> Jane Mansfield, on this copy, and I picked this up in an antique store along with many other magazines, is scribbled out. And I find that fascinating because, again, I don't know why that was done. The person who had this magazine was Glenn Zobel. Um, of Norfolk, Nebraska, and this was a subscription at one point, and I find it fascinating that she scribbled out because she died a very horrible death. She led a very beautiful, beautiful woman, looked a lot, well, looked like Marilyn Monroe, and she was like the premier um, hottie at the time, tragic life, really, really sad, and what we want to focus on today is I was kind of explaining this to Adrian. I'm going to flip to the back cover because I want you to see that too. And this is um, Niblet's Corn. And I believe that's Green Giant because he's on the label there, the Jolly Green Giant. So uh, 1955 again, and they're saying it's as fresh as this. So before, so five years before I was even born, they're already lying in advertisement because of course this is not as fresh as this. And we're heading into a time now where you're not going to even be able to get this, grow this, or whatever if it goes the way the people who are planning our future want things to go. And so I just find this fascinating because um, this happened to be laying on our kitchen table. Tom was uh, moving some stuff for me, and he needed to get a tote to store this in. And this happened to be the one of all this, like a bunch of these that I had acquired when we first opened the shop. I haven't even gone through them. And I said, hey, why is this on the table? And he says, well, I needed to take one with me to buy a tote. And I thought, fascinating that you happened to grab this because this has to do with what we're going to talk about. If you want to understand a little better how the story of you came to be, you need to go five years before you were born and look at what was your mother doing? How old was she? What did the world look like? What part of the world did she live in? Um, what kind of health was she in? Because five years prior to your conception and your birth determined a lot of what happened to you because the story of you was already building in her. And so when I brought that up to Edry today, we had to laugh because she said, oh my God, you're how old? You're in middle school. Right? Ninth grade, yeah. Eighth, ninth, grade. Ninth, ninth grade. Yeah, and you and we talked about the difference in parenting because, like, if she, because I had, I was old, really, to be a new parent, and so I already knew how I was going to parent, what I wouldn't wouldn't do. Um, things. My concern was more would my age affect my children as far as their gestation and all that. And so not my parenting. I was very confident in my parenting. I just wasn't, you know, I was worried about genetics um, because I was older. So these things really are factors in how your story begins. And your story begins right at birth. And uh, the world comes in and it starts the story of, at your birth. And it starts with your very birth and what we now have mandated when I got a social security card, I, I didn't get that until I wanted to start working. And that was mandated then that you had to go down and you had to get a social security card and you could then work because then they could withdraw the taxes for social security that was supposed to help you when you get my age now, which is, we all know a joke. But here's the thing that, that most people don't know. So by the time I had my two daughters, they had to, and everyone does now, have to have a social security card right at birth and it has to have the mother's signature on that social security card 
And what a lot of people don't understand about a social security number is that that number um, is part of what's called maritime law. And maritime law invo involves anything um, dealing with water and business over water. And any business done over water, and you can research this if you want to and dig deeper, and you should, you shouldn't just take my word for it, um, is binding with money. And so words involving money and throughout your life that you say and you don't think much about, but if you think about laws over waterways, all waterways have what's called a bank on the edge of the water. And thus banks are what you control the water through or, or dealt through. And that's why the term bank is used. And people might, a banker might tell you that's not true, but it's true. This goes way back in history. So any law made over water or dealing with water, maritime law, is binding financially, um, binding. So when that mother signs that birth certificate, you have come from water. And so when a woman's water breaks, and especially if you're born naturally down a birth canal, you have then been born through water and you are subject to that law. And you might doubt that, and you, but this is true. It, this is absolute truth. I'm not making this up. You can do the research. It's one little tiny part of your story. So the world is shaping your story not just your family, your genetics, um, and, and what you're experiencing, the world already owns you. The government already owns you. Nobody tells us this. Nobody points this out. But that's why every single baby born now has to have a birth certificate and has to have a Social Security number. So part of why I tell you, you need to kind of look at your story and backpedal all the way back to birth and this is a perfect example and I'm not giving this to you to make you a paranoid nut or anything it's just to help you understand that a lot of the world is a lie I'm not trying to make you a paranoid nut I mean it but I do want you to understand and to finally have peace with the understanding of well if a lot of this isn't true in fact probably most of it's not true um, then where, where does that leave me? And that's when you start to become the real you, the you that you were born to be, because the rest of it is a story that you've bought into and felt you had to play the part in that story as a child of someone, as a student of someone, as a person of a city, a state, a county, you know, government, whatever country you're in. These are all things that have been taught to you. You did not come out of your mother saying, gee, I'm an American citizen, female, you know, this is my name, nothing like that. So all of that was taught to you. You didn't create that. You built on that once you were an adult or will be an adult if you're watching this before being in adulthood. Um, so... If you start to look at that and can really analyze it for what it is, <coughs> excuse me, then you can start to unravel what you do want to keep and what you don't want to keep about your story, about your essence, who you are. Instead of what's been taught to you, told to you, pounded into you, um, intimidated into you, that involves every aspect of your life from what you think are your beliefs to what you think are uh, the laws that you obey, all of it. And so you always have to ask this, when you look at your story and you start to pull the threads out of like, okay, why do I, why was I raised under this religion? Or why does that religion believe this certain thing? Why does my government enforce these certain rules? And how does that apply to me? Any bit of it, any bit of your life from the time you were conceived on till you finally wake up to realizing this stuff is all in place, what you have to do is question it and say, the biggest question to ask is, who benefits from this part of my story? Who benefits from telling me, like, say, um, like, I have to get good grades in order to go to college, in order to have a good job and make good money? 
we now know that for most Americans, that's BS. You still could go to college. You still can go to college and not get grades that are stellar. You still can graduate from college and get a job doing something else other than what you got the degree in or not go to college at all. And most people are opting for that now. In fact, we're at a time in history where that really probably won't serve you to go to college unless you need to have a certain level of education. So what we don't teach is how to be creative, how to be more you know, to, in tune with yourself or how you came to be or what you really are. You're taught just certain guidelines and those guidelines used to be fairly wide and now they've become very close and they wanna make them even closer. Okay, because the closer we bring those guidelines in, the tighter we make your story, the more conflict it causes in your life and the more confused you are and the more afraid you are and the more likely you are to make bad decisions about you and not ever figure out who you really are and what you really are. And so that's where we're going to stop today. And then we're going to get into the next time about what you really are. And that might be exactly where I lose some of you because I tend to be extremely honest and I tend to be uh, very sincere and very, um, uh, what would be the word, Edry? Not afraid for them, but I am very loving mm. and I am very hopeful for people to figure this out. I'm very hopeful that you will figure out who and what exactly you are so that you don't succumb to fear and decision making that could quite possibly rob you of your very soul, we'll say. Yeah. And we're going to end there for today. Thank you.